Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I'm Joe Dunlap, and welcome to another episode of Journey Through Jersey. Now, if you missed the last episode of Journey Through Jersey, as always, the link is in the description down below. But for today's episode, we're doing another profile one on a particular Negro League player. Now, this guy never made it to the major leagues, but he was considered one of the best black baseball players of his era. Ladies and gentlemen, the story of Josh Gibson. Joshua Gibson was born December 21st, 1911, in Buena Vista, Georgia. In 1923, Gibson's family moved to Pittsburgh, where he began playing baseball at the age of 16 for a team sponsored by the department store, Gimbles, where he worked as an elevator operator. In 1926, he would go on to play for the Crawford Colored Giants. Four years later, Gibson's baseball career would change in a major way, because on July 25th, 1930, during a game, Homestead Grays catcher Buck Ewing injured his hand. Gibson, who was in the crowd, was asked to come in to replace him because his skills for being a catcher were not all around Pittsburgh. Six days later, Cumberland Posey officially recruited Gibson to the Homestead Grays. Unfortunately, the good times did not last long for Josh. That next month, his wife, Helen, who had married only a year ago, died while giving birth. He would stay with the Grays until 1932, when he was lured away by Pittsburgh's other big Negro League team, the Pittsburgh Crawfords. He would play with them for four years. Gibson also played for a couple of foreign league teams. He played for a Dominican team in 1937 and for a Mexican team from 1940 to 1941. Despite playing for several different teams, the Homestead Grays were a constant in his career. In 1937, he would return to the Grays for two years and would return for a final time in 1942 ending his career with them in 1946. During his time with the league, Gibson achieved impressive stats with a batting average of .347. He also led the Negro National League in home runs. In fact, he's said to have hit almost 800 home runs in his career. His skills were so good that many thought that he should have been the player to integrate baseball instead of Jackie Robinson. Unfortunately, Gibson would never get the chance to play in the majors. In 1943, Gibson was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He refused medical treatment for fear that they would damage it and suffered constant headaches for the next four years until he tragically died of a stroke at just 35 years old. He was buried in an unmarked grave that remained unmarked until 1975, three years after he became the second Negro League player to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Although he never made it to the major leagues, his undeniable skills showed that without a shadow of a doubt, the Negro League players could be just as good, if not better, than the players in the league that would not let them in. His son, Josh Gibson Jr., also ended up playing for the Homestead Grays. In 2011, the United States Postal Service issued a 33 cent stamp with Gibson's name and photo. Gibson was often compared to Babe Ruth. In fact, they called Ruth the white Josh Gibson and called Josh the black Babe Ruth. Just three months after Josh Gibson's death, Jackie Robinson would integrate Major League Baseball. His great grandson, Sean Gibson, currently runs the Josh Gibson Foundation which offers several programs geared to helping young people. Well, that does it for another episode of Journey Through Jerseys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it, comment, share, it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram is the same name, TV. Stay tuned for the next episode of Journey Through Jerseys while I'll be going to the story of the Pittsburgh Crawfords. So again, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.